sure we're live. Pop out the chat. And there we are. Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another live stream. Today is December 17th, 2019. And we're doing another drop in math tutoring session. 2019-2020 uh, school year. This is number 10. Okay, and it's 12.30 uh, p.m. my time pacific time and uh we've done a lot of these before i'm just popping out the chat to make uh, to make things easier uh we've done a lot of these before and we will continue to do them and right now in my part of the world uh it's sort of exam season um sort of midterms kicking in for people before they go on break for the holidays so i thought it'd be good to do one on a Tuesday today's Tuesday so if there's any exams usually it's on uh, you know the last three days of the week just before everyone finishes school right if you're lucky you get the exams before the break if you're unlucky you're gonna get your exams after the break which means you got a two-week gap uh, that you have to review to relearn things and remind yourself what everything was about i always like writing exams before breaks and after breaks because you carry that you know if they're important exams you're carrying that anxiety with you into the holidays right and you need you know you need to get stuff done it's always good to come back from a break with a fresh start not carrying over from two weeks before right uh, aside from that, we're just going to chill. If you guys have any math questions, uh, drop us a line in the chat. Uh, there might not be too much activity going on here. Okay. Waskoi Wallet, how are you doing? Welcome to the live stream. What are your tips for partial derivatives? Oof, partial derivatives. Waskoi Wallet, I wish I could tutor you teach calculus right now. I'm not touching calculus right now just because um, I haven't done it for a very, very long time. And to do it justice, I would have to, I wanna build it up from the core up, right? So I'm mainly focusing on pre-calc. That being said, derivatives, uh, as you know, calculus is sort of introduction of the, of time into mathematics, us looking into how functions change with time, right? When it comes to partial derivatives, what you need to do with a lot of mathematics, really, this is just general information, but with a lot of different branches of mathematics, what you need to do is recognize the problems that you're dealing with, right? If you're studying something in math, I mean, that's the beauty of learning mathematics, right? When you're in school, will you, when you sign up for a certain course, you know that the material coming to you from that course are related to the content of the course right so the best thing you can do to prep yourself for calculus for any exams you're going to write or any tests you're going to write or any problems you want to do is familiarize yourself with the type of problems that you end up getting in this course in this material and that the only way to really get that going is to do problems you need to practice right Olive, how are you doing? Hi, this was a pleasant surprise. Didn't know you were going live today. Yeah, <laughs> you're like nine hours ahead, Olive, aren't you? Eight hours or nine hours? Eight or nine hours? I can't remember. Depending on what part of Europe you're in, Norway, right? Norway? Yeah, Norway. Uh, from where, from what I recall, not Sweden. Don't say Sweden to Norwegians, right? Fun. Yeah, this is going to be our sort of last math stream we do for at least two, two, three weeks until people get back from the holidays, right? I'm just going to chill with it. I can hate this world, man. I'd like to watch it. Uh, I am, I am Nick too. Uh, that's what the powers that be want you to do, uh, to hate things. Forget about hating it. And it's it's up to you. You're nine hours. Okay, cool. Should nine thirty p.m. Nine thirty. One thirty two. Three four five six seven eight nine nine thirty p.m. Norwegian time. Pre calcus stuff. I 
Uh, I like trig, right? Yeah, I love trig. The holidays are the best time to do math. The one, the one mask of Raven. <laughs> not, not for kids who are in school. When they have holidays, there's like they're done. Usually, it takes me about a week. Sometimes, if I'm lucky, to kickstart students again into math mode after a two week break even right after a two week break you need to crank the wheels again and get people uh, energized and thinking about things i hate nothing but i still want to burn it all so i would i would suggest uh, before you decide to burn anything you should create alternatives for people to go to right if you dislike something if you want to see a change in the world right then create something as well right don't be the joker and if you're pretending to be a joker uh, joker i like the joker right tell that to the school age <laughs> yeah funny yeah most kids right now where i am they're burnt out really there the, how long has it been september october november december so one two three they're, they've been in school for about four months right and they're burnt out burnt out they can't wait for this two-week break really i am nick tell you what i am nick one of the best things you can do to have a really amazing appreciation to what we can do in this world really what we can do in this world instead of burning it down uh, is to learn mathematics learn math spend a little time just really getting that perspective once you go from a non-mathematical perspective of the world to a mathematical perspective of the world your world is going to shake up your reality will shake up all of a sudden you just go what is going on right and then you no longer feel like burning things down you feel like ah. you feel powerful once you feel powerful you tend to create more things than you destroy right I saw some of the schoolwork my cousin do and I don't blame them for being burnt out I can't imagine being forced to participate in that garbage yeah mask of Raven like when I talk about our education system right to people um, for me I have a very unique perspective right I see I know what should be taught I know how it should be taught I've been in looking at this whole system for over two decades now i see the perspective from teachers i see the perspective from students and i see the perspective from parents i know the politics behind it and i know the economics behind it when i talk to people about our education system there are very 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 few people who really appreciate what is taking place right now because if they really understood it they'd be scared shitless okay it is insanity right and then you take a look at the whole thing and go what is possible and the what is possible part i see the perspective of it because i am functioning outside of this centralized education system so I see what is possible for all of the students that I work with, right? Their imaginations, what they are capable of, their passions, right? Their loves, why they hate, why they're burnt out, why they're excited, right? I see all that. And once you explain that to people to a certain degree like i've come close to sharing a lot of that info with you guys but not even right once once you see that perspective man that's fuel to the fire 
that's one of the things a lot, a lot of people ask me what motivates me that motivates me that is one of the greatest motivations I have right here's the problem and here's what they're trying to destroy right what level of math are we at here we're talking uh, uh, Suran, Sur, source run source run uh, I teach late elementary all the way to pre-calc high school right so grade 12 I'm in the West Coast I am Nick yeah West Coast of Canada right so I teach I focus mainly on high school mathematics if everyone in the world was literate in high school mathematics that includes grade 12 mathematics where you're graphing functions and have a taste of statistics and stuff like this right no calculus but pre-calculus right I don't think you necessarily need calculus to have a mathematical perspective of the world right you can have a statistical aspect a perspective of the world right just just uh, West Coast Nick right West Coast do you have any tips on remembering the multiplication table well uh, Z art for sure <laughs> right for sure here hold on a second Ticho Ticho 10 by 10 uh, we created the multiplication table here 10 by 10 10 by 10 generating a 10 by 10 multiplication table take a look at this guy this is uh, something I put out in 2015 generating the 10 by 10 multiplication table okay oh I know I'm sorry uh, uh, saucer on in this video we called it the uh, uh, a smart math generating the 10 by 10 multiplication table all right so we just go through talking about the multiplication table right and here is and I'm gonna do more on this by the way uh, we're gonna do some practice problems on this uh, because I started putting together a series of videos okay on early childhood education to a certain degree early childhood education but includes basically teaching counting adding and multiplication and there's more coming in this in this playlist I've laid it out I just haven't got to it I'm Mask of Raven loves calculus if you have calculus questions Mask of Raven might be able to help you if he's into it uh, but Z art take a look at this table we have and if you already know how to add and stuff take a look at the how to teach multiplication this is me sharing some of the techniques I use to teach multiplication okay specifically this video and I the first three videos in this playlist and it's ordered from the oldest to the newest okay the first three videos in this playlist are basically a full video that we shot that I shot on it I have the whole thing in uh, in one uh, video okay here I'll link you this and you can just skip this one and go straight out into the multiplication table okay yeah if you put up in chat I might be able to help awesome thanks mask of Raven we're getting a lot of calculus uh, calculus stuff I wish I was better at my calculus right iron maddies by the way thank you for the follows and subs uh, just in case I missed them because I move around a lot thanks Chicho. I'll give it a watch awesome just remember there's symmetry in this in the multiplication table right if you draw a multiplication table here if we draw the table let's just say it's this right if you go straight down the perfect squares right this side is mirrored here this is the axis of symmetry and you can just go boop boop and always keep in mind multiplication is just an extension of addition right that's all it is here's the addition rotate this thing 45 degrees and you have multiplication 
because multiplication is just an extension of addition. So if you have two times six, this means two things. It means six added together twice, and it also means two added together six times. Plus two, plus two, plus two, plus two, plus two, right? The reason we have multiplication is because mathematicians are lazy. They wanted to condense multiplication. I always say mathematicians, are lazy. they want to condense addition and they created the symbol multiplication to simplify this, right? So that's all it is, really. Dante, how you doing? How's life? Welcome, welcome. Thanks for popping by. <laughs> Today is slow day. <laughs> like, how many people we got here? We got seven people here. Woo! Nice and easy, right? It's the last week before Christmas. No one's into mathematics, right? <laughs> oh, fun. I think we're into mathematics. We can just chill. I've been going ballistic teaching my students. Been doing a lot of in person and online stuff and whatnot. Uh, just because they got exams, right? Just because they got exams. Here, let me show you what I got for snacks. I got apples. I've been eating a lot of apples. Loving the apples. Art and Maddie's math is awesome. One hundred percent agreed. I'm studying for linear algebra final. Then I'm free. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Math is awesome for sleeping. <laughs> linear algebra, man. I like linear algebra. I had to teach it to myself because I took a course that I didn't have the prerequisites of linear algebra. And it was uh, systems of uh, integrals and it was crazy modeling things with triple integration and stuff like it was like the hardest course I've ever taken in my life. I practice math on Khan Academy sometimes. Yeah, nice, nice. For me, I've used Khan Academy videos uh, a few times. I, not that many, like maybe a dozen times over the last, I don't know, 12, maybe a couple of dozen times over the last like 10 years or something, right? If Because I know what I'm looking for. If I know what I'm looking for, I just do a search. Uh, but usually I want a little bit more in-depth stuff than I go to longer versions. Some of the professors and stuff hardcore people teaching math right uh, but it's fun it's i love i love the fact that there's so much math content now online it's amazing it's amazing right it's empowering people right it's giving people the knowledge the help they need to educate themselves in a big way in a big way by the way gang we're doing another three streams this week we're doing health tomorrow uh, what are we doing we're doing health tomorrow we're doing uh, here let me give you the times since we're having a downtime we're going easy we are doing doop, doop, doop. we're doing open discussion on food and health tomorrow starting at 9 a.m. my time that's tomorrow on Wednesday. On Thursday, we're taught we're doing an open discussion on current events from 11:30 a.m. to 1:30 p.m. Okay. And on Saturday, we're doing an open discussion on Julian Assange. That's December 21st from 11 a.m. to 1 a.m. Okay. Just to let you know what's going on there. There's a lot of also education stuff going on in the world. Uh, it's crazy. Oh no, I'll have to miss the discussion on food and health. Oh no, Mask of Raven. It's our first discussion really on, we've done cooking streams, but we've done health, I think. We've talked about health, but I think this is our first live stream specifically. Just let's talk about food and health. I think it's important. We'll see where it goes. Uh, I'm gonna go through at some point all these different types of live streams we're doing and we might just put a series a set together and say we're gonna talk about this 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 and start focusing the streams on different things uh, all right 
not just current events and open discussions, but just specifically just talk about health, talk about economics. We've got to do an economic stream, uh, but I want to get some videos out before we go into the economic stream. Uh, I want to do some of the analysis we did on the, because I've I collected, I've tabulated, I put it into tables, the comic books we've sold, right? And I did some, crunch some numbers. I'm like, wow, 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 right? So I'd like to take a look at that some of that stuff. I sold a little bit uh, since I finished the table. I don't think I'm going to include that data in there. We have enough to do our analysis on it, right? Uh, so I thought we do, we do that. Everybody's already writing exams right now. It's a weird time for me to do these math streams, uh, by the way, just because it's uh, it's during the day in my time. So at least uh, West Coast is still in school, right? So they don't they're not having the opportunity to pop in. Uh, at some point later on, I'm gonna do these math streams later in the evenings. I think once we go past the longest night of the year, we start getting more more daylight uh, uh, out then we'll start doing later in the evening right i don't know if that's good or bad since i believe we disagree on organic food gmo and such you're okay with all all types of food mask of raven for me uh, i don't want gmo for sure and i i go towards more local eating organic and stuff right but to each their own right to each their own whatever works for me i'm just getting older i gotta watch what i eat more now right like i used to be a huge generic chocolate bar muncher right gmos are good in principle the problem i find with that stuff is because the power is so centralized the corruption so rampant uh, and the experiment uh, what they have done to food the experiment hasn't run not even close to one full cycle yet we don't know what the side effects are or some of the stuff but we can talk all talk about all that stuff tomorrow today is education math physics even I've been doing some physics reviews with people. I wanted to hear, let me show you one of the questions that uh, one of my students had in a physics 12 uh, exam quiz that he just wrote, right? Now, they, they were doing, uh, the section is basically statics, uh, equilibrium and stuff like this. Hey gang, I broker, how are you doing? To me, living healthy means not drinking a bottle of vodka every evening. My tolerance of vodka always goes inhumane when doing construction projects. Yeah, I broker, by the way. Unfortunately, many of us in the Western world have gone through that phase. Every criticism of GMO I find convincing are actually just criticisms of capitalism that I agree with. To a certain degree, Mask of Raven, I think a huge chunk of the criticism of what we're doing uh, when it comes to the agro business, huge chunk of that is associated with our economic system, but we can't separate that from, from what's taking place, right? Here's a problem that one of my students had, and it, it's only like a two mark problem. He said it was a two mark question on, an, on a quiz that he was writing, right? And the question is this, there's a truck driving on an inclined road, right? So here's the, here's the truck, here's the road, okay? Here's the road. Let's assume this is, I don't know. Obviously I'm exaggerating. If you're driving a truck going down a road like this, don't, right? I think that GMO is fine if it's regulated to keep artificial, uh, deficit away from it <laughs> Dante. so check it out and the way that the drawing is the truck is either going into the road or, or into the board or coming out right so the truck is not driving like this it's not going up the incline it's driving into the road right 
into the thing. And the question was, your tire, tire, right? So the truck is going in. And the question was, and he only gave the dimensions of the truck. And I didn't, unfortunately, I didn't ask for the dimensions. We just talked about the problem, right? And the problem only gave dimensions, right, of the truck. And it asks, what does the slope, what does the angle of this road, what's the maximum angle of this road before the truck tips over, before the truck goes boop, right? And I was like, and I asked my student, I go, well, did he give any, you know, did the teacher, that's a GoPro graph driving up. <laughs> funny uh, and I asked my student you know did they give you anything else like the weight or the coefficient of static friction or anything like this He's like, no this was it the dimensions and he said he he got stumped by this it was only worth two marks and his solution was basically if the center of gravity his reasoning behind this was if the center of gravity goes past the tire the truck will tilt right so this truck will tilt if we draw another one <laughs> I draw this, I draw it with the same angle no, no let me change the angle on this I'm like wait a second the center of gravity is still out so if the road was like this And the center of gravity is here whoop. and if it goes like this this truck will stay on the road and this truck will tilt over that's the reasoning he gave yeah center of gravity was it didn't you know what it didn't really occur to me center of gravity when he when he gave me this problem i was looking for more info Right? I was looking for coefficient static friction. I was looking for the weight of the truck. I was looking for speed. Th that kind of stuff. Sounds about right. Yeah, yeah, we agreed. He said that's the argument he made. And we said, yeah, yeah, that would pretty much would be it, right? Because the mass, the weight of this thing, of the truck, would hit the tire here on this side of it, on this side of it. So that would keep it on the road over here the mass is on this side so it would just continue to flip over right yeah it makes sense that is why boxer motors from subaru are that good the center of gravity is low and a lot more stable cool yeah i like uh like uh, i've had a couple of pathfinders in my life um the nissan pathfinders and i found those to be really good I used uh, back in the 90s I had one and I used it a lot for geophysics going on some crazy terrain and uh, it did well it did well right? I thought that was a cool problem to put on a physics test I liked it right? the one of the things with uh, physics is it uh, when you do physics here let me do one more uh, a lever where you want one side to be pinned down and once more uh, than half weight shifts to the other side over the back wheel the lever behaves how we want how we don't want a lever where you want one side to be pinned down and once more than half weight shifts to the other side so this one's pinned down this one is not right let me show you another type of problem he was getting and this involved uh torques okay uh, you needed torques for this so here's a type of problem and i like uh, I like teaching higher level uh, in large part when it comes to physics and mathematics because it's uh, 
I come across problems that I have to pause and think about it's challenging right it's good for the brain it's good good muscle uh, you're building good muscles right but here's one problem that he had and this is statics um, torques forces and stuff like this right he had one problem where you have a plank right? and it's being held up with a couple of strings okay there's a robot here okay this is Chicho's robot okay there's a robot here and you got the plank and the question is what's the tension in this string and this string given the following information okay the mass of this guy let's say is 10 kilograms the mass of the beam is i forget what they are we'll just come up with our own 75 kilograms okay kilograms the total distance of the beam let's say it's six the distance here is 0 0.5 and this is 0 0.5 as well 0 0.5 as well uh, the distance of the robot is let's say two meters and is there anything else is there anything else is there anything else um, no that would be it right so you're given this information hopefully I'm not missing anything and hopefully this is coming out let's see is this better that's a little bit better six two meters and these are meters all of it right 0 0.5 0 0.5 10 kilograms 75 kilograms oh we do need this distance too uh, the distance that's point oh no no we got that figured out okay cool so the question is what's the tension here at t1 and what's the tension at t2 right so the way we laid down this problem the way we ended up doing this problem i like this problem okay because it involves torques right so there's there's two types of static equilibrium problems you end up getting usually in physics that you have to think about right one of them is um, you try to balance out the forces right so if you have here let me show you this if you have an object right and there is like a force acting on it like this okay this pen is done let's grab a different pen. blue pen so if you have a force let's say you have a box there's a force one acting on this box here there's another force acting on this box here too let's say there's another force acting on this box here right and this box weighs let's say 20 kilograms and it's not moving you ask yourself okay what you know what's one of these forces right they'll give you this one they'll give you this one they'll give you this one and they'll say if this thing isn't moving static what's this force here right and all you do with this type of problem is you say all the forces have to balance out so you break up this one into its components right so this is f1 y f1 in the x direction you break up this one into these components right and you say this is f 3x f 3y and this one let's say it's just horizontal right then all you say all you do you say all the y forces f 1y must equal to f 3y oh you got this guy too sorry my bad and you got mg here right and that's acting straight down so you say f 1y plus mg has to equal f 3y right because that's one force acting now that's another force acting now and that's the only force acting up 
So they have to balance. This plus this has to equal that. If this thing is not moving, um, if this thing is not accelerating, let's rephrase, because if it's, if it's moving at constant speed, this is also true. But let's say it's static, right? And in terms of the x direction, the weight doesn't come into play because that's acting straight down. Then f1x plus f3x have to equal f2 in the x direction, right? The forces have to balance out. When it comes to torques, right? they come into play when we're not treating everything as a point source right there's distances involved when there's distances involved you do the same thing the forces in one direction have to equal the forces in the other direction right but it's not just the forces they have to equal it's the torques of them they have to equal right so the force times the distance of this times force times the distance of this have to equal each other okay so over here let's erase this what you do with this is you say okay what are all the forces acting on this object right on this system so there's this guy here acting out that's T1. There's this guy here acting up. Right? This is T2. There's the robot's mass weight acting down, which is this guy. And the only other thing we have here is the plank acting down on this, right? And what we do with the plank is we take the plank as being a point source. And we say that's in the middle acting down okay now consider this which one of these t1 or t2 is going to have a more of a tension right because if we had this let's assume we had this model instead of all this stuff on it let's say we had a plank and it was laid out the same way and this was a string and this was a string what would t1 and t2 be what could you say about t1 and t2 right if this is a plank right. t1 and t2 they would be equal right if this is a homogeneous plank that it's not heavier on one side or anything these two would bear the same amount of weight to hold this guy up right that's why you know well, i'll use gloomy reference but when people are carrying coffins you put three people on one side in general and three people on the other side so no one's really carrying too much weight unless they're different heights right you try to when you're getting people to carry something heavy you want everyone to be approximately the same height so the weight distributes evenly right unless they're willing to either bend down or lift up and that could create some problems right but if you have a homogeneous plank and you got strings holding it up then the tensions in the strings will be the same however let's assume we had this thing what would happen if you put a weight here right wherever you put the weight whichever string is closest to that string is going to carry more weight the tension in here would be more than the tension in here now right that would make sense so for the system, T1 is a bigger force than T2. Okay. Now, if you notice, we have two unknowns here to a certain degree. We want to find both of these. And we don't have any specified pivots when it comes to torque. And pivots are basically in torque type of problems. Or you basically put something as a hinge and everything else can rotate around that so if you have a plank here if you have a plank and if this thing's sitting against the wall this would be your pivot and then you could have forces hitting here hitting here and you would try to see if it's an equilibrium then this has to equal that this times the distance has to equal this times the distance that's what the whole principle of torque is 
right? So if this force is one, this is force two, and this distance is d2, and this distance is d1, and if this thing is in equilibrium, it's not moving, what you would say is f1 d1 has to equal f2 d2, right? And always keep in mind, if you want to know how torques come to play, just imagine if you have to move a gigantic boulder, right? Now you could sit there and try to lift it up and throw out your back. You could try to push it this way. If it's sitting on a hinge or on, an, on, a, on a slope, you could maybe push it over, right? But if it's on flat ground, it's large, you're gonna have a hard time. So how do you move something heavy, large, if you can't do it physically, just manually yourself without any tools, well, you go grab another rock, you put it in front of it, you go grab a metal rod or something, like a lever, and you stick that thing in the into this under this big rock, and you go use the little lock rock as a hinge. Why am I doing this? I could draw it, right? So if you have this gigantic rock you want to move, you put another rock here, you bring a hinge here, right? And you stand here and go pull the sucker down and you can move that, right? If this thing's longer, it's easier to do. If you try to pull down here, right? That's going to require you giving a lot more energy, right? It's one of the basic tools that we have uh, that we've known about humanity forever, right? So this would be your hinge so if you want to think about in here this would be your hinge this is your hinge so if these two if this is not moving if this is in equilibrium this has to equal this then the force here would be bigger than the force here right because this is further out so it's sort of thought process as well you want to know how the system operates right so you're going to keep all all this in mind the more problems you do this way the more little nuances you remember about specific types of systems like there's a whole mindset behind people who are inventors right it requires to give the same amount of energy but a different amount of force yeah right and the torque is what we're talking about right the torques have to equal each other to a certain degree. So take a look at this. So for us over here, one of the things we do when it comes to physics types of problems, we try to simplify problems for ourselves, right? We try to make things easier. The way we try to make things easier, we either, either label things in a certain way where they make sense, or we label things in a certain way on a drawing to eliminate the unknowns right so we try to get rid of the unknowns and solve this a more simplified system than the one that's being presented and one thing we can do when we're trying to solve the system to find out what the tension is here and what the tension is here is we specifically eliminate either t1 or t2 but putting in an imaginary pivot at one of these locations so all of a sudden, if you have a drawing, if you have a pivot, if you're applying force on the pivot, nothing's going to happen with this, right? So what we do is, for the first problem, we're going to eliminate T1, and we're going to try to solve T2, and we're going to put a hinge here. Okay. So we say, you know what? Just imagine that this system was exactly this, but this point was locked right we're making it a hinge and we're going to reference everything to this point then what we have i'm going to redraw this down here let me bring out a green i'm going to redraw this thing here just with the forces that we're dealing with right so we're making this a hinge right here's a hinge this is going to be difficult to erase i think here's a hinge <laughs> that's one and then i'm going to draw the plank here right here's our plank right so we have t1 going up like that. oh sorry t2 going up like this we got the weight of this guy coming down and we got the robot and it's the center of gravity is here 
but we're just going to put it on the plank working down like this so the torques these two torques that the torque that is being applied at this point at this point has to equal the torque at that point for this thing not to move right so all we need now is the distances here so this distance that was 0.5 from here to here is 2 so this is 1.5 the distance here if the whole thing is 6 right and this is 0 0.5 right well if the whole thing is 6 the, well we can't do the middle at 3 right because we're going to account for this so that's 0 0.5 so the distance here is I should have made the numbers easier to here and there's 0 0.5 there so actually we have to account for this as well here let me erase this let me put it down here so we see so if we go from here to here right because the plank is going up there that's 6 minus 0 0.5 which is 5.5 meters the center of gravity of the plank is going to be in the middle of this plank excluding the weight here because that's on this side of the hinge right so 5.5 divided by 2 well 5 divided by 2 is 2.5 0 0.5 divided by 2 is 0.25 so it's 2.75 meters so this distance here is 2.75 meters and this distance here starting from here that's 0.5 so that distance there is five right i hope you see that that's okay all right i'm just going to erase this so this distance here here let me draw it here is five meters okay we're almost finished laying down this problem so the equation for this is going to be Let's call this R for robot. Let's call this plank for the plank, and that's T2, right? So the torque on R plus the torque on the plank has to equal the torque on T2. So the torque on R is force times distance, right? Well, the force on this is mg. The force on this is mg as well, but the m varies. So this is the mass of the robot, mass of the plank mass of the robot here let's write down the formula mass of the robot times gravity times the distance which is 1.5 plus the force the mass of the plank p times gravity times the distance which is 2.75 has to equal t2 the force at t2 times five okay ah, you can barely see that too light too light m r g 1.5 plus m p g 2.75 is equal to t2 times five right and then all we do is just plug in the mass of the robot is 10 gravity is 9.8 the mass of the plank is 75 times 9.8 those are just numbers you divide by 5 and you got your tension on 2 right how do you find this one you move your pivot from here and you put it there you measure everything from here this way the distances right and you solve for t1 nice problem really fun problem to do you gotta love physics you gotta love physics right physics is just it's just brilliant really physics is just brilliant torque is also a practical construction planning problem we once had a, a panel flip once uh, since the planner didn't do the calculations right thank god for no one was under wow so a panel on a roof on a on a skylight or something broker construction is i've been around construction uh, most of my life most of my first 35 years of life anyway um it's an interesting uh, 
interesting place to be we're 40 years of life maybe right it's a very interesting place to be extremely dangerous but uh you learn a lot on a construction site yeah a middle floor panel yikes <laughs> scary scary and who signed off on that thing right crazy 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 and one of the things i love about physics is drawing systems right they draw your system and you start making notes on it and put your arrows in place planning is a mystery to myself mostly just follow the project yeah there's 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 usually for a lot of construction home anyway own a small apartment you have the if it's not an architect you got your construction people who they know what they're doing they draw it they go get an architect to you know pay him like five grand to check it and put this signature on it then goes to the government goes to the city and they have to approve it and their people look at it and say no there's problem here there's problem here there's problem here you need to fix that and then the whole cycle kicks in again one more loop one more loop and you get approval and you go ahead right but good explanation to put the thought into formula yeah yeah there is like some things you think physically they'll work all of a sudden you realize the forces are out of balance and bam, things snap things snapping is the most dangerous uh in construction sites uh from my experience anyway because when things break there's shrapnel flying in places uh, actually uh, let me ref uh, let me restate that the most dangerous things uh situations in a construction uh site are people who, who are new to construction those are the most dangerous situations when it comes to construction uh, when you're getting new people who've never done construction enter a work site there they don't understand the safety reasons of things right so I find working with new people to be the most dangerous or one I did uh, to be the most dangerous aspect of construction uh, because if everyone knows what they're doing they got the safety measures in place and everyone's following protocol accidents are on the bare minimum right and of course there's unscrupulous uh, companies that cut corners and put everyone's lives at risk but i really didn't encounter that too much um, most of the time for me it was a professionals contractors so they needed to they couldn't afford any downtime right they needed to be physically able to do things otherwise uh, they're out right they're out fun we're not going to punch in the numbers just because it's just numbers it's click 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 right and for sure when we did the problem by the way for sure this one was more than that one yo chicho do you have the time to give me some advice for sure dante for sure we're we're in chill mode right now it's fantastic and uh, take any advice i give with a grain of salt man like really like or anyone else has to give in chat as well all right when building high rises then they get very tolerant and careless uh when the when the height rises slowly always need to keep an eye on them yeah 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 the larger the corporation that's doing the construction i found the more uh what do you call the shortcuts they take right I, it's it's an interesting place to be it's an interesting place to be riot how are you doing doing well brother thank you i have an appointment tomorrow with someone who can put me into a job training program that i need pretty desperately i got to convince her that my desperation is over 
and that I can do this what should I tell her uh, oh depression not desperation um, depression is over and that I can do do this what should I tell her job interview tomorrow for a training program that you need pretty desperately you need to convince her that your depression is over what could you tell her I think that your behavior um, would be more uh, an indication to her than anything you can tell her to a certain degree right so I would say stand up tall right look her in the eyes don't twitch uh, f f it was called fidget around too much right don't be rigid don't be tight be relaxed but carry yourself well dress properly shave if you need to if you're you know you don't want to go there with a 24-hour uh, thing uh, yeah I always look uh, depressed yeah Dante change your look how did I end up here? the Arab New Zealand <laughs> Z. Uh, Dante that's really important um, if you're eating if you guys are meeting at a cafe or something just get some kind of herbal tea or just something not too sugar high or anything like there's just something simple uh, smile right don't you know don't look silly and go mm, smile all the time but be have a good demeanor about you uh, aside from that I'm not sure you know if she comes out and straight out says hey are you uh, still depressed are you still dealing with depression you could say no I've come out of that phase uh, uh, and I'm very happy about it um, and I did a lot of self work and meditation and I'm exercising if if it comes up for sure mention to her that you're exercising because a sure sign that you're someone's you know has a handle on depression is if they're exercising a little bit right you listen to music um, you're enjoying life you're in good health because uh, depression has certain physical mental uh, attributes to it right uh, that physically outwardly show yeah I will try to mention that I'm exercising and eating healthy huge 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 right and maybe mention to her that you've worked on a couple of projects recently and finished them off and you feel great about it and whatever they might be right if there are things you've been doing but that would be my take on it uh, Dante I found that the best way to confront uh, in interviews is to practice out loud in front of a mirror uh, with the stuff I'm going to talk about in the interview in hand practicing it uh, practicing can make you more confident for tomorrow for sure riot for sure I'd agree with Riot as well and do the, I hope you've done the research into the work training program right if you haven't look into that program men you know if it comes up just say yeah I've looked into the program I'm really looking forward into going into this going into that and talking about these things and learning more about these things and stuff right so look into the program as well just like any interview you go into look into the company that the the company that's interviewing you that or that you're seeking a job for you only need one good person to get you through life successfully and one bad person in your life can also destroy everything you have uh, built in your life successfully life right there is a certain amount of luck involved in life if the interviewer asks then mentioning some hobbies would be good yeah hobbies would be fantastic Nikki how are you doing welcome welcome and don't concentrate uh, uh, concentrate to prove uh, herself too too much also people pick up on what you're thinking just try to feel good whatever works for you to feel good yeah 
that's what I would uh, big time uh, book her yeah of course thanks for the our pleasure uh, Dante fingers crossed it works fingers crossed you get in right uh, and maybe think about some of the questions that she might ask you that might throw you off right and prepare an answer for those interviews are hard for me it, I've done I've never I haven't done an interview with a company for ever in person I've had some people that uh, have hired my services and you know organizations that I work with when it comes to teaching there they feed me a certain number of students and stuff like this ask me questions and I've had parents ask me what my background is and why I'm suited to work with their kids and stuff like that and rightfully so for sure they use a vetting process right uh, so I've interacted in that way and in general my my uh, the way I deal with it the, the information that I convey to them is that look my focus is this I am had a lot of experience in this and I try to set their mind at ease and explain to them that if they don't like my services after the first one or two sessions that's fine I don't work with everyone but my success rate is extremely high and my focus is the student period right so I try to put people at ease right off the bat in a large part mainly because I'm honest like I try to be as honest as I can and answer the questions uh, appropriately right and I don't have a time factor associated with this right I don't say you have to make a decision now or anything like this I go think about it take your time no rush right hey Chicho when you're trying to learn a new complex topic how do you uh, approach it mentally I immerse myself in it riot I literally just immerse myself in it I to a certain degree I drop what I have to drop doing or put whatever I need to put on hold on hold until I've uh, I have a good grasp of what's going on like there's been times there's one thing that like that's one thing with the school or education system is about right like when you go through university and get a piece of paper that says hey you're trained to do this most people in companies high level management they know you're not trained to do this they they know that the only thing that this paper represents is you were willing to spend money resources four or five years of your life to get this piece of paper to get you through the door so you can work in this field that's what you're telling them right you they know most people know that nobody coming out of university is trained to do anything right it's just a matter of are they dedicated enough to do something so i immerse myself in whatever it is that i'm doing i've had things in my life come into my life where they were so profound that i dropped everything it took me a month right i've done this a couple of times it took me a month to close off tons of projects and sort myself out and I took one time I took year to two years off on a sabbatical to immerse myself in this thing that I encountered to educate myself in it and that was one of the most profound periods in my life right it takes energy it takes effort uh, learning is not meant to be easy if learning was easy it would just be called doing it wouldn't be learning right but man when you come out of that powerful powerful right can you talk a little bit about logarithms I've been having trouble understanding them yeah for sure dissolving girl let's do logarithms I'm glad I ended up here I'm glad you like her <laughs> I have never done an interview in my life have had a couple of police interrogations when younger <laughs> good practice Nikki says and how are you doing let's talk about logarithms um, 
dissolving girl now dissolving girl um, I'm gonna link you to a video that we did in the past logarithms uh, but I'm gonna go over that right now well not all of it but so, uh, a lot of it and there is a whole series of um, a whole playlist I'm gonna create specifically in regards to logs the type of same type of stuff that we've done for trigonometry if you do chicho trigonometry uh, introduction to the logs visualizing exponential log and functions graphing here we go this is my sort of intro video to logs okay but I'm gonna go through it right now with you uh, just you just for you to have an appreciation for what it is okay let me sort myself up I actually heard someone say something like there's no failure you either win or you learn really stuck with me yeah pretty much as long as it doesn't take you out of the game right if uh, I'm just gonna pop some an apple delicious thank you I'm a music uh, music theorist and I always have to interact with logs since the ear hears log rhythmically does it dissolving girl that's cool I didn't know that I associate music with uh, trig functions right trigonometry but that's cool I should look into that more yeah I literally uh, dunked my brain into machine learning starting maybe two weeks ago been working on building a mental model of how it works cool I learn the best when I get a little obsessed with something yeah for sure <laughs> Yes, our perception of sound is non-linear. Wow, I didn't know that. That's cool. That's super cool. I wonder why. Is it the material that the ear is made from? Or our processing abilities? We are more sensitive to higher pitches uh, in real IRRC. What does IRRC stand for? Our perception of sound is non-linear, it's logarithmic, eh? You would absolutely love studying microtonality and just in intonation. It's so incredible. Uh, Dante, that's the Fletcher Monson curve, which describes amplitude sensation. Really? In terms of pure frequency sensation, we hear logarithmically. If I recall, wow, because the octave is a two to one ratio, and we can hear the two to one as a distinctly different sound, but the same pitch higher. Oh man, you're getting me all excited. This <laughs> is like, what? Show me the graphs, show me what it looks like. Let's talk about logs. Let's talk about logs yeah that's true that's super cool so look the way it works logs is this in mathematics what we try to do musician here i uh, wondered about this nice nice uh so in mathematics what we have we have the opposite of things that we can do right so addition the opposite of addition is subtraction the opposite of multiplication is division right the opposite of something to a power of something to a certain degree is the radicals but the radicals are really the same thing this guy just goes if you're gonna do this goes in the denominator of the power right now one other thing we do in mathematics is when we have an equation right? So for example, let's say we have this. We have y is equal to 2x plus 1, right? So let's say we have y is equal to 2x plus 1, and this graphs a linear function, right? This graphs this. 1, and you go up 2 because the slope is 2 over 1. 1, 2, and over 1. This is this line, right? Now, one thing we like to do as human beings, we like to take things apart right and take a look at them oh what are they made from right factoring the other thing we like to do is we like to mess around with things switch up the order of things 
just to see what happens. So mathematicians came along and said, hey, okay, we know how to graph a line, but hey, what happens if we take the reciprocal of this or the inverse of this? We switch the x and the y, right? What if our equation was in y is equal to 2x plus 1? What if our equation was x is equal to 2y plus 1, right? What does the graph of that look like? And what does that do, really? What does that do? Well, first of all, let's answer the question what that does. What that does, if you switch the position of the x and the y, it takes any function, right? Any function, doesn't make a difference what it is, and it flips it about the line y is equal to x. Okay, this pen is dead. I'm going to kill this pen too. Let's do this in green so you see this. So it takes y is equal to x. So when you take any type of function and switch the x and the y, what you're really doing is you're taking whatever function you have and you're flipping it about the line y is equal to x. You're letting the line y is equal to x act as a mirror, right? I like to think about it like this. You take whatever function you have, you put your fingers here along the line y equals x and you go whoop, and you flip this, right? So the flip of this, let's draw this in purple, I guess. The flip of this is gonna look like this. That's my crappy way of drawing a line, right? So the purple is this guy flipped, which is really this guy, right? Now, whenever you were writing a function, we're not gonna write x equals two y plus one. You wanna get the y by itself, right? So what you do is you get the y by itself. x minus one is equal to two y, and then divide everything by two. So y is equal to one over two x minus a half, which is what we have here, right? This is the purple function. Whoop. And that's this guy, because the y-intercept is negative a half. From here, you go up one and over two. One, two, one, two, where is it? Oh, up one and over two, so we're here. Okay. Does that make sense? So that's what we're doing when you switch the x and the y. Right? Keep this in mind. I'm going to erase this. Okay. So let's take this out. That was a linear function we drew, right? Whoa. <laughs> that was a linear function we drew, right? We've got an infinite number of types of functions, right? Or infinite number of functions. There might be a limited types of functions. I don't know. Category wise, there might be limited types of functions, but there's an infinite type of functions, right? Math. Yes. Yes. Smiles back. Snack. Snack. Snack that smiles back. Snack that smiles back. Nice. No, it makes sense. Randy, how are you doing? So take a look at this. Let's say we have an exponential function. Let's say we have the following. Let's say we have a function called f of x is equal to two to the power of x. And if you don't like f of x, let's use y. Oh my God, now it makes sense. Let's use y, right? So let's say we have a function called y is equal to two to the power of x. That's a large function, that's huge, right? Actually, no, no, let's not do two to the power of x. Should we do two to the power? Yeah, let's do two to the power of x. Okay, let's make a table of values. Let's graph this function using a table of values. Okay, here's our x, here's our y. So let's just plug in values for x and find out what y is and we'll graph it here, right? First one we're going to do is 0. So when x is 0, 2 to the power of 0 is 1. So when x is 0, 2 to the power of 0 is 1, right? When x is 1, 2 to the power of 1 is 2 x is 1, 1, 2. 
x is 2, 2 to the power of 2 is 4. 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. And 4. When x is 3, 2 to the power of 3 is 8. 3, that's 4. We're up here, right? We're off the board. I did not expect this to be so satisfying. What a golden moment. <laughs> Zachary, how are you doing? Now, we know what the graph looks like on this side. Let's see what it looks like on this side. Let's plug in values, negative one. So two to the power of negative one is one over two. Two to the power of negative one is one over two. Because anything to a negative power, all the negative does, it just flips it, right? Reminds me of crypto trading days. <laughs> negative 2 2 to the power of negative 2 is 1 over 4 so negative 2 is 1 over 4 so it's here so an exponential function looks like this all right cool all right that's y is equal to 2 to the power of x right what do mathematicians do what do human beings do we like to flip things around, mess around with things, right? Can we do something in four dimension or higher next? Four dimension. Uh, here's a four dimension. Ready? This is me drawing a three dimensional box at this moment. <laughs> it's live streaming this on Twitch. We're in four dimensions. I just came here to say, God, I hate man so much. <laughs> you should love it. Powerful. Are you talking about tensors? Tensors, if you are, man, at some point I'm going to learn tensors. Fair. Wow, love, I love. that just blew my mind. <laughs> right, take a look at this. So what do mathematicians do? Mathematicians, us... We like to mess with things, right? Flip things around. That's what I'm learning now. Tensors, you're learning tensors. <laughs> one day, one day in my retirement, and when I'm like, I don't know, let's say 92, I'm going to start learning tensors. Right? So, hey, that's our function. What happens if we switch X and Y? I really need to know the tensors. What happens if we go X? Here, let me write that. No, let's do it here. X is equal to 2 to the power of Y. Oh, wow. X is equal to 2 to the power of Y. What's the graph of that going to look like? Right? Okay, let's do a table of values. Right? X, Y. So, If we start plugging in numbers for x, it's going to be hard for us to solve for y, right? Is it not? It is. Like, for example, let's assume, let's line up the x. Let's assume x is 1, right? In here, we're going to have 1 is equal to 2 to the power of y. What's y? What's y? 2 to the power of what is equal to 1? Well, 2 to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So 0. Right? So we can do it that way. Plug in values for x and try to find y. But we get problems because we can't guess most of the answers here. Right? If we put in x is equal to 2, right? 2, 2 to the power of y, well, 2 to the power of what is equal to 2? Oh, 1. That one's easy. Cool. What if we put in 3? So 2 to the power... Uh, sorry. 3 is equal to 2 to the power of what? Oh, way more difficult. Way more difficult, right? However, one thing we can do in math is we don't necessarily have to plug in numbers for x to find y. We can just plug in values for y and solve for x, right? Let's do it that way. No one says we have to start at x. This is an equation relating x and y. Equation relating x and y. We can just do values for y and solve for the x, right? 
I Google what a tensors are, then close the window. <laughs> Call the fuck. <laughs> Gonna be going back to school so math is making me nervous. Uh, tensors are very pretty. I think I'll try and learn them via Python. Nice. That's what TensorFlow is made for. Oh, Riot, you're making me envious. You're making me jealous. One day I'm going to get into this, right? One day I'm going to get into this. So let's plug in values for y. When y is 0, 2 to the power of 0 is 1. When y is 1, 2 to the power of 1 is 2. When y is 2, 2 to the power of 2 is 4. When y is 3, 2 to the power of 3 is 8. Right. Take a look. Do you see? 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 4, 3, 8. 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 4, 3, 8. Oh. Right. Okay, let's try one more. y to the power of negative 1. 2 to the power of negative 1 is 1 over 2. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's all you're doing. So negative 2 is negative 1 over... Oh, sorry, it's 1 over 4, right? Because when you do this, when you switch the x and the y's, what you're doing is you're doing a flip about the line y is equal to x, right? You're doing a flip about this line. y is equal to x. When you're doing a flip about the line y is equal to x, you're grabbing your function go so this guy's gonna go poof what you're doing in terms of tables the coordinate system you're switching the x and the y's because that's exactly what you did you switched the x and the y so you switch the x and the y's right you're okay there so far i think tensorflow might not be the right start for me too much uh boilerplate i'd rather do something lightweight and taller size So what you're doing is you're switching the x and the y. That's what that means when you switch the x and the y in the function, right? So the graph of this guy looks like this. 1 and 0, 2 and 1, 4 and 2, 4 and 2, 8 and 3, way over there, a half and negative 1, uh, a quarter and negative 2, Right, so the graph looks like this. Ooh, sorry. So we know what visually this looks like, right? Cool. Now this is called exponential functions, right? What are we going to call that? These types of functions. Anti-exponentials? What's a good word for these? I'm going to call them logs because that's what logs are. Logs are the inverse of exponentials. That's what logs are. Okay. And what they do is <laughs> exactly right. They're just the inverse of exponentials. Logarithmic functions are you switching the X and the Y around for exponential functions that come up with that function. Now, what we need to do is wait, it's not gradient descent i lied it's linear regression okay exponential functions were the hopes of every <laughs> every technician now this crypto trader yeah any trader not just crypto any trader right so take a look at this this is our function right and again like the line that we had right we had the equation of the line and then we switched the x and the y but we don't want to write the equations as x is equal to 2y. We need to get y by itself. How do we get y by itself? Let's do it. Just like exponentials, logarithms have certain rules, right? Those are words. Right. So let's take this function. Here, let me erase this part. Give us room here so we can mess around with it. Let's see how dark is this. That's dark. Then it'll show up. Good. Hard to erase though. This one's nasty. Let me find one that's going to be easy to work with. Okay, that's the same color. We'll use this one. Ch -ch -ch. 
So take a look at this. Let's take function. X is equal to 2 to the power of Y. Just like mathematics, right? You can do things on one side with an equal sign as long as you do them to the other side. So what we're going to do is we're going to take logs of both sides. So this becomes log X is equal to log 2 Y. Okay. So all we've done right now, because you need a little bit of preliminary log intro to this, but all we've done right now is take logs of both sides. It's like saying here, let's multiply both sides by five. This would be five Y is equal to five times two to the power of X, right? We just multiply both sides by five, okay? What we're doing right now is we're taking logs of both sides. Now logarithms, just like exponentials, they have certain rules right one of the rules in logarithms is this the standards says this if you have log of a to the power of b you can kick the b down and this would be b is equal to log a oh sorry not equal to is equal to b log a okay that's one of the rules we have regarding logarithms so for this right now, what we can do is grab the Y and kick it down in front of the log. So right now you got log X is equal to Y log 2, right? And the name of the game is we want to get Y by itself. So we're going to divide this side by log 2. And we're going to divide this side by log 2. So this becomes y is equal to log x over, oops, log 2. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see it. Now, one of the things we have with this is the rules of logs is this. So you can write the exponent in front of the log. Exactly. If it's in the power, it can come down to the front of the log, right? And the and the trick with learning logarithms is learning the log rules, which is basically learning the same way you did with how to deal with exponentials, right? So if you had exponentials like x squared times x cubed, well, you add those guys. That's x to the power of 5. Once you know that, you know it. It's over, right? Logs has the same type of rules associated with it. Learn the log rules everything else is easy right it becomes ridiculously easy okay for example here one of the log rules we have is this if we have log of a over log of b here let me put the small case b you can write this as log a to the base b it's just terminology right well cool this one means I'm just going to erase this part. You can write this as log x to the base 2. So this function written in log form, and I like to show it this way, right? If you want to con convert this to log form, you can just grab the 2, kick it down in the log base, and this just becomes, let me write it with this, y and this guy drops y is equal to log base 2 of x this is this graph okay this part you can think about it this way grab the 2 kick it down in the base and this guy drops oh focus focus there we go. Right. Grab the two, kick it down into the base, and this guy drops. Okay? That's the basics of logarithms. Aside from this, there's like seven log rules that we have. You just have to know how to manipulate them, right? How to work with them. Just like you did exponentials, just like you do this. Okay? Really. I know logs takes a lot of people out of the math game. It shouldn't. It shouldn't. It's 
once you wrap your head around what logs are, then you're just playing around with another type of function and there's certain rules associated with logs and you can manipulate your function accordingly, okay? I always find logs easier when I think log is what power in do I have to put a, put A to to get B out, where log A B, A, B of base A with base A equals N, yeah. If I got that right, way around, not sure. That makes sense to me. I hadn't considered the unique operations you could do with them. Yeah. Huge, 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 right? It's like a, almost any other type of function in mathematics. There's so many functions that give us certain types of powers. Certain things in the world just follow that pattern, right? I, I hope that helped you out. Uh, dissolving girl if you have certain specific types of questions where you're trying to simplify things uh, we can definitely work with it I can erase this and show you some of the rules so it's so useful when you need to rearrange complex energy things yes thank you so much I really appreciate it. my pleasure dissolving girl anything to help people learn mathematics almost anything to help people learn mathematics right because it's empowering once you learn this, wow, woo, ah, whew, party, <laughs> right? <laughs> Man, I don't go back to work until January 3rd after today. Phew, what a relief. Nice riot. Luckily, few engineering things are truly exponential because reality rarely goes to infinity. Yeah. Bacterial growth is exponential. Radioactive decay is exponential. But all of those things have limits. They don't go on forever their bacteria specifically grows grows exponentially until it consumes the host or consumes whatever and destroys the host and poosh, dies in itself right inverse square law of sound is exponential inverse square law of sound is exponential inverse square law of sound. i don't even know what that is all right i got to get ready for the um, bet good night Chicho. good night dante good luck tomorrow brother keep us posted fingers crossed you're in the door right op amp instability is what i'm thinking of what is this math topic called this is called logarithms this is a logarithmic function and this is an exponential function okay like how sound drops off as it's moving away from us yeah is that what it is it's like the redshift well sound and light is exactly the same thing they're waves right well not exactly the same thing but waves howdy ahmed how were how are you doing so what was that called inverse square law of sound is exponential so is that the one we're referring to as uh dropping off just like redshift with uh with the stars with galaxies moving away right English is my second language and I'm moderately drunk. So I'll, I'll play this game in hard mode. <laughs> Funny. Yeah, sound falls away uh, logarithmically. So it attenuates exponentially. Cool. So it's like gravity. Gravity is, uh, yeah, it's uh, to the power of two. Is this high school math? This is high school math. Yeah, grade 12 in my part of the world. Other parts of the world, probably grade 10, grade 9, maybe. Some parts of the world, you don't even touch this. Okay. Let's take it down. Let me give you some of the rules for logs. Right? We've got a little bit of time left. Let's cover that. school for me they didn't teach it to you in high school right logarithms I did this at uh, homes as a homeschool kid nice awesome I hope you had a uh, good tutors fortunately education exists freely these days yeah or close to freely before high school 
but I'm a Brit, so no idea what age HS is. My mom. Nice. Awesome. You had a I hope you appreciate her very, 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 very much. A very clever lady. Sounds like she did a fantastic job, right? So take a look at this. Some of the log rules. It's just like exponential rules here. X squared times X cubed is equal to X to the five, right? Logarithmic rules. Log uh, AB is equal to log A plus log B. So if we had log six, right? Let's say we had log of six, we can write log of six as log two times three. And according to our law, it says log two plus log three. So log six is log two plus log three. Oh, that's cool, right? Right? x squared to the power of 3 is equal to x to the power of 6. Oh, look at that. Look at that. I studied logarithmic functions in my second year of high school, and I can't remember crap. <laughs> Let's crank the judo. Triple integrals or nothing. <laughs> but, man, I was terrible in HS and math. Uh, what I learned in college was that you have to actually practice the math and do the homework. Yeah, I don't I didn't do that as a kid. Just kind of expected to understand anything I looked at. Not the case with math. Not the, math. You know what? Right. It starts off that way. Right. People understand us. And at some point in high school, all of a sudden you need to do the homework. And people haven't been trained. Right. Educated enough to take on that responsibility to do the work their work ethic is not there right one of the first things you need to do is build up the work ethic with the students the work ethic is not there and they don't do the work and they don't do well so we can get infinite log one out of any log n yeah log one is two. it's zero yeah uh, i was pool hustling and uh, bribe a couple of teachers during high school to finish school as soon as possible and when i got older then i actually want to learn things nice pool man i i did a, i did a little bit of a playing pool eight ball and nine ball i played a lot where did apprentices go in the top right uh, corner problem uh, this one is x squared to the power of three right so they just disappears and a power to a power they multiply each other power to a power multiply the exponents okay i'm legally blind and it wasn't uh, detected till ninth grade wow i've always been very good with sciences but i fell behind in mathematics because i was seated in the very back oh no of my school algebra class i couldn't see anything so i grew to hate math ah oh. I actually love math though and I wish I could have had a different starting situation I have an in, intuitive understanding of systems logic but I wasn't able to see the overhead so I couldn't learn oh that's unfortunate this old girl uh, again it's it's a learning thing right uh, it's a burden you carry but makes you stronger down the road I think uh, and it's never too late like you we just covered some stuff that you're like wow cool right Here's, here's a couple more log stuff. I used to love algebra in college, but didn't go any further than that. That's why eventually I'm going to learn math from my favorite teacher, <laughs> That's right. So that's one rule we have. This is rule number one, right? Here's rule number two. We talked about this. Log A to the power of B. If you have a log of something to a power of B, you can take this, kick it down. So this becomes B log A. Okay. And by the way, whenever we're writing log, if I write log, where am I going to put this? Log implies is log base 10. Okay. It's like saying if I write down the square root of 5, I'm not putting the 2 here, right? Because it implies it's the square root. There's a 2 there, right? Yeah, I would love to take lessons with you if you teach privately 
I do dissolve and grow. I do. I have I have students that I work in private, and I have students that I um, do online activity with. Okay. Bloggy. 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 Is that what it says? No. <laughs> bloggy. Bloggy. That's right. Bloggy. Be bloggy. Right. That's one rule we have. Here's another rule we have. Log A over log B can be written as log base B of A. Right? Cool. Here's another rule we have. A to the power of log, uh, what is that? A, B? This is just, this kills that and that just drops is B. Right? Uh, what are some of the other rules? Uh, GP, 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 bump, bump, bump. And by the way, subtraction where division works the same way. If we had uh, log, uh, let's say five over four, you could write this as log five minus log four. I'm sort of running out of space, but I'm giving you some stuff. I have no clue what is going on here, but I think I, it's uh, really cool you do this. Yeah, thanks, cool of cool of Borg <laughs> it's just I'm making myself available for a couple hours every week you know two to two to four times a month uh, just talk about math and if I you know if we there's people here that know mathematics better than I do if we can help out other people to learn mathematics we do All right to the best of our abilities okay uh, what are some of the other log rules I'm trying to go by memory here right so over four is the same as 0.25. So over four, over four. Um, in here, you mean? It means you're dividing by four or multiplying by 0.25. Often when things go over my head here, I still feel like it will plant some seeds. Yeah. yeah. Because we do try to link this up to a lot of other things as well, right? Log A, log B. Uh, no, that's that one is not true. The Scarlet Phoenix. So I'm gonna erase these. Take a look at this here, let me erase these. That's a common mistake that a lot of people make, right? And I associate it or blame it on division really check this out so yes that is correct yes that is correct uh zachary yeah exactly okay now take a look at this uh the scarlet phoenix you wrote this log a over log b equals to log a log a minus log b this is not correct this is this log a over b is equal to this okay is equal to log a minus log b this guy is not equal to that this guy is equal to log a with a base b okay what you wrote down is a common mistake that a lot of people make so it would it's equivalent to writing this so we wrote down log a b is equal to log a plus log b but that doesn't mean log a times log b is equal to that that is not correct okay um there are some uh, some other relations as well oh i wrote it wrong yeah <laughs> yeah but this is the one you want All right and it's powerful and it's powerful like they give you stuff like this here let me give you give you a crazy problem crazy question right 
not a crazy question, but something they give. Here, we won't, we won't make it too crazy. They'll give you stuff like this. They'll say, rewrite this. Log uh, x squared y cubed over z 2z to the power of 5 cubed. Rewrite this with separate terms, right? Hey, do you com compute integers in here? Compute, uh, compute integral. No, we're not doing it to calculus right now. Uh, quadruple O. Sorry. View bot. I'm staying away from calculus right now. Uh, of G to G teacher voice alteration. Thanks so much for your uh, demonstration. This was great for my lunch break. I'll email you about working together. But my pleasure, Dazalan Girl. I hope you found it useful and thanks for bringing up the questions by the way right it's nice having questions to deal with instead of doing random stuff right so is it true that log n equals yes so take a look at this here log uh, let's do this let's start off this way right how can we rearrange this well if you remember according to one of our laws log a to the power of b we can kick the b down right this would be b log a well if you can do that then you can kick it up as well right is there romance in mathematics yes yes there's so much romance by the way hi legendary rob boss there's so much romance in mass ma mathematics that it drives people insane literally right can you show us the proof for the love equation no. i don't know if there's a one equation i think it's more than that oh my god math tutorial i found the dark side of twitch <laughs> see where this is going right yeah you see where it's going for sure so you can kick this up right so this becomes log of one over n to the power of negative one because there's a one here right what does a negative power do it flips things so this would be log of n right. not only rash, rational s stimulation here but good vibes from good intent and good company ah uh, nice yeah for sure we've got amazing people here on chat right such a pretty proof and you haven't finished yet yeah right. this is because a to the power of negative one is just one over a so 1 over a to the power of negative 1 is just a right it flips it all right take a look at this guy what if they wanted you they wanted you to write this in terms of uh just separating the multiplications and division stuff like this well you can do this i might use your help though i got a huge exam on friday and i haven't started learning yet oh you caught us at towards the end there. what do you got what do you got going on flux capacitors <laughs> i don't know flux capacitors <laughs> i wish i did i don't <laughs> right take a look at this here's one one rule we're applying we can take the exponent and kick it down so this is three log x squared y cubed over two z to the power of five right well the other rule we have we have multiplications and divisions or additions and subtractions right geometry formula i don't know yes they're they're a, a plot device from back to the future is that what they are <laughs> so take a look oh that's what it is flux capacitors can you please explain flux this is back to the future thing ah uh, i think so anyway someone brought it up i think so so here's our rule we got the three out here well, these guys are being multiplied. These guys are being divided. So use our rule. This becomes log x squared plus log y cubed minus log of 2 minus log of z to the power of 5. And then you can take the powers and kick them down, kick them down, and kick them down, right? So this becomes 3, 2 log x plus log 3 log y 
minus log 2 minus 5 log z. And then you can multiply the 3 in to all of these guys if you like. So that's 6 log x plus 9 log y minus 3 log 2 minus 5, oops, not 5, 15 log z. Right. You can kick the 3 up and that becomes an 8. 2 to the power of 3 is 8. There you go. Right. You can kick the 9s up if you like, but leave it like that. Right. So you could just play around with it, whatever you want to do. Right. X, how are you doing? How is life? It is inside the parentheses. Uh, not necessarily. It's the log of this whole thing. So I can kick that down. Yeah. And over here. Right. Can you show the reason why log function is also the inverse of base 10 fun? Oh, we just did that, brother. I think we just did it. You missed the beginning part when we did logs. It is nice that most of the proofs of the log laws involve converting to expon exponents and uh, reversing the results to determine the log output. Yeah. Example log. Yeah, we basically just did that. Like the one you want is this, right? Here. We did a full blown explanation, but here we can do this. So log. Uh, 10 to the power of x, right? Uh, and so what we can do is kick this down. So this becomes log 10. And whenever we log, write log 10 is base 10, right? So this becomes x is equal to log 10 over log 10, right? And log 10 kills log 10, so this is just equal to x. It's the split of it, right? I only know that with enough powerful capacitors you can build a ray gun can you can you solve a simple simple potency function just so that i can get an idea of what it is <laughs> i have no idea what that i don't know why it's i think that's a notation mistake unless log da, 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 da. To, no, it would be added together to be that, right? It, oh, that's what you're talking about. Hold on a second. Let me let me correct this. Watch this. Okay, let me do it in red because red is coming out better right now. Here, let me erase these guys. The thing that I wrote before was log x squared y cubed over 2z to the power of 5 all of it to the power of three, right? All of it to the power of three, right? Now this, I can bring the three down, right? However, if I wrote this, log x squared y cubed over two z to the power of five to the power of three, I couldn't bring that down because it's the whole thing multiplied. So this would mean this times itself three times, right? What you wrote down, which is log n times log n, that doesn't equal two log n. Log n plus log n, and we don't need the brackets here, is equal to two log n. This would be log n the whole thing squared okay yeah if it was the log of the whole thing that would works i thought the q was outside of yeah sorry i should have cleared things up a little bit right you're putting some powers outside log brenda um yeah i didn't i didn't mean it that way my apologies it's just uh the way we use it here Monkey farts, how's it going? Yeah, you cannot uh, connect the capacitor to get the needed voltage and then ray gun is a possible. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, awesome. I'm glad we cleared that up. 
Oh, that's a notation thing. Yeah, it's in my part. That's what they do. Uh, they never put it here. Would you mind proving one of the log laws for us? Um, we did the proving one of the log. Um, we can rearrange things to get it. Okay, because I'm used to calculators. The parentheses on the second line seem implicit. Okay. Hello, do you have a PhD? No, no, no PhD in math. I got my degree in geophysics and minor in mathematics. Thanks for going back through that. Oh, my pleasure. Zander Wolf. Chicho has a PhD in cliff diving. <laughs> that I would say to a certain degree, I would I would give myself a master's in cliff diving, cliff jumping, right? Maybe third, second year, P, third year PhD student. Electrical wind engineer here. A little more complex than that. Oops, I accidentally <laughs> my message. <laughs> That's funny. How are we doing for time? We've been live stream for like two two hours. Nice. It started off slow, but we kicked it up. We started doing lots of things. That's fantastic. Right on, right on. I get happy when I do like when we do math. When it gets into a rhythm, the questions are coming in, we're doing stuff. That's super fun. Keeps me on my toes, right? Oh, zoom, zoom. Hi, Chicho. Long time viewer on your YouTube channel. Saucy Rossi. Welcome, welcome. You got an emote. Thanks to the uh, Xander Wolf cheer. Right on. Woo. We got an emote. Ah, oh, thank you for the bits, uh, Xander Wolf. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I hope you're enjoying these live streams, by the way. Saucy Rossi 07. Sleepy Doggy 69. Are you being silly? Love your stuff, Ticho. Keep it up. Will do. Will do, Xander Wolf. Thank you very much for the love, man. Thank you very much for the love. 10 emotes shared. Wow. Cool. This is my first math stream. I've seen you too. Thanks for that. Oh, what's that? It looks like haha. -ha. Present. Nice. Oh, what's this guy? Haha, -ha, baby. Nice. Is today's topic is like we did some logarithms, yeah. I am dead artist. Are you a math teacher? I do teach math. Yeah. High school mathematics. Review reduce low echelon form of matrix. Oh <laughs> that sounds complicated. <laughs> I don't know what that is. I would have to look that up. <laughs> Static. When Chicho done, do you think he'll log out? Ah, nice fun, Riot. Fun. Chicho, one of my favorite videos is when you showed how your long and short boxes are set up. And yes, the live streams are great. Awesome. Yeah, that one, my setup is still the same. <laughs> Every now and then, for the comic books we put on eBay to sell, I actually. I had some stuff on they're sort of using a not storage but work area sort of storage got boxes so I moved everything and I went through one side a uh, few long boxes and I pulled out some of the comics that we've been selling for the last few months right so it, it is handy it is fun but it took a certain amount of and it's good exercise right I'm a huge comic book collector as well awesome man awesome it's seriously I one of the greatest things I ever did, uh, Saucy Rossi, I think you'd agree. One of the greatest things I've ever done in my life, and one of the worst things I've ever done in my life is become a comic book collector. <laughs> the greatest things is just the joy of it. It's just amazing, the expansion of the mind and the stuff you read and what you're exposed to and just all of it, right? Fantastic. The worst part of it is, oh my God, it costs a lot of money. <laughs> And you gotta move these boxes around in space and stuff. Uh, but I wouldn't change it for the world. I wouldn't change it for the world, right? One of the greatest pleasures that I have in my life. It's a great joy and a job. And a job. That's one way of putting it. Mathematics is my favorite subject. Nice. Can you teach me some basic math? I suck at it. Oh, Tarek. We're 
about to sign off on the stream uh, I have a whole bunch of stuff on my website go to the language of mathematics if you want basic basic math um, here here's here's the latest playlist I put together uh, just add counting adding and multiplying and within this if you go to my playlist if you go to the language of mathematics I start putting on math videos this this table of contents I'm giving you is in reverse order and same with the other one the the newest videos are up top but I started putting on math videos in 2008 right and I covered the basic stuff there a lot of it so um, but you're welcome to pop in in the next live stream we do math live stream we do and all I can cover some of the basics with you how about I look at the four-year transform Oof. yeah it's a great joy and joy I just did four year today at college nice awesome I broker thank you very much for the tier one sub you taught me some great eBay skills for buying bulk lots I have I have got a lot of Bronze Age books using your awesome awesome you can get some amazing deals on eBay just distribute out the cost into shipping you see one seller that has a lot of stuff you want make them offers blah, blah, blah. get gigantic box sent to you <laughs> can I ask you some questions in future streams college math um, as long as I can do them for sure now high school mathematics goes into college as well pre-cal graphing and stuff uh, so oh thank you very much for uh, gifting a sub uh, Zachary it's their first gift sub in this channel awesome five emotes shared nice gift shared reward to five others in chat nice nice one day I built that ray gun uh, uh, broker if you do let me know how you did it <laughs> I would love to have a ray gun thanks <laughs> we need more streams like this we'll try our best we've been doing a few of these I'll do my parts as long as I can right I got a bunch of werewolf by night nice and tomb of Dracula awesome about a year ago doing what you do nice awesome I love and it's by the way uh, saucy Rossi it's getting harder to find those kinds of deals it's getting harder okay always turn turn in when streams are oh check out our patreon page Tarek you don't have to contribute to patreon right let me see if my patreon patreon does it have a language it does nice go to our patreon page you can just follow and if you follow they'll send notifications to you right now I'm only posting on patreon in the post section I'm only really posting our schedule I'm gonna start posting other things as well I just have to get my stuff set up and you don't have to contribute and all the posts are always open unless patreon changes the format they did that and it was posting stuff and it was patreons only for a bit which was like uh, open so and you can follow the stuff on twitch and I'll notify you and stuff but patreon is mainly has been the streams and you can definitely go to our discord page and see the streams I do announcements about these streams about a couple of days beforehand right okay so let's call the stream gang where are we thank you very much everyone for the follows subs okay I dropped a follow too nice awesome Tarek uh, so we already have the next three streams set up and the next math one will probably be uh, Tarek a couple of weeks because we're going into the holidays here so there isn't going to be too many people doing mathematics um, so look for more math streams coming in beginning of January okay and we're gonna do anywhere between two to four a month and exactly the same format as we've been doing here okay. uh, thank you for being here gang thank you for the uh, mods for taking care of business I know Dante is not around but thank you Dante for taking care of business thank you for your follows thank you for the subs thank you for the bits thank you for the questions thank you for the interaction fantastic love doing these Thank you for the stream you showing thank you everyone for the good company see you around awesome see you guys around and if you can make it tomorrow 9 a.m we talk about health 
Thursday, I think 11.30 p.m., we do current events. Saturday, I believe at 11 a.m., sorry, 11.30 a.m., we do current events. And I believe 11 a.m. on Saturday, we talk about Julian Assange, if you can make it. Um, and then we'll see what comes after that, okay? Thanks for uh, being here, everyone. And I'll see you guys uh, in the next stream. Bye for now.